There are way too many credit cards out there for you to compare on your own. So I've done it for you. I am a huge spreadsheet nerd, so I had to build the ultimate spreadsheet comparing all the credit cards for myself. If you go to a website like NerdWallet, they'll tell you this card is five stars, this card is four stars, this card's four and a half stars, but what they're not telling you is which card is rated higher at different spending levels. The best card for you is gonna depend on how much money you're spending and what categories you're spending that money on. I've taken all that into account. In this video, we're gonna go over my comprehensive spreadsheet comparing six of Chase's primary credit cards at different spending levels. Let's get into it. Here we have the comprehensive Chase credit card spreadsheet. The spreadsheet has three sections. One section where the different Chase credit cards are shown with their annual bonuses and sign up bonuses, along with their points per dollar spent categories. Here we can see the annual bonus column. These are bonuses that you get every year, year after year, whereas the year one column, you only get those bonuses on sign up. So I wanted to keep those two separate so you could get an idea which bonuses are you going to get one time for like a big boost at the beginning and then which bonuses are you going to get year after year if you do decide to keep the card. The second section is the user profile section where you can include or exclude different annual bonuses or sign up bonuses that apply to you or maybe don't apply to you. Thirdly, we have a section where different spending levels are shown with different categories of spending and how those different spending levels relate to the amount of points you get from each credit card. Let's get into the first credit card. The Sapphire Reserve is the big dog of the Chase credit cards. It has a huge annual fee. We got stuff like Lyft, DoorDash, Instacart. I personally do not utilize those. So if I were doing this for myself, I would put a zero into these categories so that those bonuses do not affect my comparison. I don't want those bonuses to bump this card over one of the other cards if I'm not gonna utilize those bonuses. But for the sake of this comparison, we will leave a one in all those categories so you can get an idea for what the maximum value is that you could expect to get from these credit cards. The Chase Sapphire Reserve has the biggest sign-up bonus, $900 value. As you can see, in order to hit that $900 sign-up bonus, you have to spend $4,000 on purchases in the first three months. That can be hard to hit for some. For others, if you're gonna hit that naturally, then it's a pretty good sign-up bonus to take advantage of. So in year one, if you can take advantage of all of the sign-up bonuses, you'll be up $1,485, but every year after that, when all the signup bonuses are no longer in effect, uh, you'll be down $200 at the beginning of the year. And that's before you take into account the different categories for points that you get from spending. You can see you get at least one point per dollar spent on all purchases. Dining give you three points per dollar. If you spend money on Chase flights, you get five points per dollar and 10 points per dollar on hotel and rental, which really gives you a good clue what kind of credit card this is. This is primarily a travel credit card. If you do a lot of travel, there's a good chance that this card may be the best one for you. The next credit card we're gonna look at is the Chase Sapphire Preferred. This is kind of one level below the Chase Sapphire Reserve. The annual fee is only $95, so you're starting out not quite as deep in the hole, but you don't get as many sign-up bonuses. In my mind, I think that's a good trade because when I pick a credit card, usually I'm looking to hold it for several years. So the category that I'm more concerned with is the annual category. Before you account for points from spending, you're only $25 in the hole after you get the annual hotel bonus. Of course, you do have to plan a trip every Every year to take advantage of that bonus every year where you stay in a hotel and then you have the annual 10% point bonus. The way that works is you get 10% of the dollars you spent in the previous year in points. So if you spent $20,000 last year, you would get 10% of that. That's 2,000 points and 2,000 points is equal to $20 in value. I just threw $20 in there because that's pretty close to the average spending on a credit card in a year, about $20,000. The next card I wanna look at is the Prime Visa. For some people, this card is gonna be really, really good, but it's mainly gonna be effective for people that like to shop at Whole Foods or Amazon Fresh, and also purchase a lot of things on Amazon. For both of those categories, you get five points per dollar spent, which is pretty good compared to the other credit cards. Additionally, there's no annual fee, so you're not starting off in the hole, and there's only a small year one sign-up bonus for hitting your spending $100. Now, if you are not somebody who's gonna take advantage of the Amazon, Amazon and the Whole Foods and Amazon Fresh, what you would do is you would come up to the top, you'd put a zero in that category. Whenever we get to the point comparison section, it would not boost those points to five points per dollar spent. It would just keep them at the base one point per dollar spent. 
Next car we're gonna look at is the Chase Freedom Unlimited. There are three cars in the Chase Freedom credit card series. The Chase Freedom Unlimited is the most popular. It has no annual fee. You get a few year one bonuses, $200 sign up bonus, which isn't bad. And then of course you've got the DoorDash and the Instacart. Again, I don't utilize DoorDash or Instacart, so I would put a zero in those categories in the user profile section. You do get solid points per dollar spent. You get 1.5 on all purchases, which is a half step above the previous cards we've looked at, as well as three points per dollar on dining out, drugstores, and then five points per dollar on travel. Chase Freedom Flex card is interesting because it is the only credit card we've looked at so far that has this flex spending category. This category changes every quarter and it only gives you points for the first 1500 spent in that category. Now this one is hard to utilize completely. If we go to the website, we can click on their cashback calendar and see what are the different categories that you'll cycle through. So here we can see the 5% quarterly cashback calendar for 2023. No telling if 2024 will be the same, but we can use this at least for comparison. Between January and March, Dollars that you spend at grocery stores, Target, or fitness clubs and gym memberships will get you 5% cash back. Unless you're going to spend $1,500 in that quarter on those three categories, you're not going to be able to get the full value. So that's something to be considerate of. Between April and June, you only get the 5% on dollars you spend at Amazon or Lowe's. Personally, I would have a hard time spending $1,500 at these two stores. My wife could easily do it for Amazon, but I would have a hard time. So I might not get the full bonus in that quarter. Next, we've got gas stations, EV charging, select live entertainment. Again, I would have a hard time with this one. I don't think I spend $1,500 in three months on gas. So I think that would be tough. And then PayPal, wholesale clubs and select charities. Again, I would have a hard time with this one as well. I don't go to many wholesale clubs. Now you could be savvy and maybe hold some of your Amazon purchases for the second quarter. But other than that, it, some of these categories are gonna be hard to hit. The final card in the lineup is the Freedom Rise. This card is primarily for people who are trying to improve their credit score. So it doesn't have the best bonuses, but it's not bad. It's very simple. The Freedom Rise has a $0 annual fee, has a few little bonuses here. The sign up bonuses for enrolling in auto pay, you get that only in year one. And then you get 1.5 points per dollar spent on all purchases. This final section shows different spending levels as well as the different categories that are relevant to the credit cards we're comparing. One thing that will have a big impact on that score is the user profile. So let's make a few changes to the user profile and see how that affects which card is the best. The average American spends about $19,000 on their credit card in a year. If you spend about $19,000 a year on your credit card, we would go to that row and see which card gives us the most points for that spending level. We can see the Prime Visa wins pretty handily with $622 worth of points. We know that the Prime card gets a lot of points if you shop at Whole Foods. If that's not what you do, and if you're not heavy Amazon shopper, we put a zero in both of those categories and we can see how those values change. After putting zeros in both of those categories, we can see now that the Prime Visa has dropped significantly. First place now goes to the Freedom Flex at this spending level. At $19,000 spent per year, a really important factor is gonna be the annual fee. If a card has a really high annual fee, then you're gonna have to spend a lot of money to account for that hit at the beginning of the year. The Freedom Flex has zero annual fee, so it's gonna require more spending for some of these other cards with better points per dollar spent to make up the difference. For instance, if we go to the, the highest spending category, $58,000 spent on your credit card per year, we can see that the Sapphire Reserve comes out on top. The first profile that I want to look at is somebody that doesn't travel at all. They're not going to take advantage of global entry. They're not going to take advantage of airport dining. They're not going to take any trips per year. Only one traveler. They're very frugal. They don't want to DoorDash. They don't want to use Lyft. They don't use Instacart. They don't shop at Whole Foods. It's too expensive. And we will take off Amazon heavy as well. After editing the user profile at the lowest spending category, $10,000 put on your credit card per year. The Chase Sapphire Reserve is looking pretty rough. You've lost $305. That's going to be due to the fact that one, you didn't travel. Two, you didn't have very much spending to account for the high annual fees. And three, you couldn't use any of the annual bonuses. Coming out on top is the Freedom Flex. And this is going to be due to having no annual fee and having high points per dollar spent on the flex categories. But when we move up to the $19,000 spending category, which is average, you can see that the Freedom Flex remains on top. 
When we move up to $40,000, the Freedom Flex remains on top. And finally, at $58,000, the Freedom Flex is on top. It is safe to say a very frugal spender who doesn't travel, the best card is gonna be the Freedom Flex. Thanks for staying with me this long. If you're enjoying the video, please leave me a like down below. It helps with the algorithm and I'd really appreciate it. The next user category is gonna be somebody who travels a lot. They like to use Lyft. They like to shop at Whole Foods. They like to use Instacart. They like to shop on Amazon. They're taking three trips per year and they have a family of three. Let's see how this user profile looks on the comparison. For somebody that travels so much, you might expect the Sapphire Reserved and the Sapphire Preferred to be on top. However, the high points per dollar spent from the Prime Visa is too much for those bonuses to overcome. If you're spending a lot of money on Whole Foods and you're spending a lot of money on Amazon Prime, then the Prime Visa is just always going to come out on top. You can see at the average spending category, the Prime Visa is in first place at $33,000 spent on your credit card per year. The Prime Visa is in first place and at $58,000 per year, the Prime Visa in first place. So the main takeaway here is if you're shopping at Whole Foods and Amazon a lot, Prime Visa is for you. Now let's change the user profile to keep this person as someone who travels a lot, but they no longer are gonna be utilizing Whole Foods and Amazon Prime as much. So we're gonna put a zero in the Whole Foods and the Amazon Heavy section, and we'll go back and see which card comes out on top. At the average spending category, the Sapphire Reserve comes out on top, barely over the Freedom Flex. Once you get up to $33,000 spending, you can see it's starting to pull away. Once we go up to the top category, $58,000 spent, it is solidly in first place. This is primarily due to the big bonus that you get from lounge access. If each person is getting about $25 in value for each trip, this is $25 times three people, $75 times three trips, that's $225 in value just from the lounge access alone. Here we have a graphical view at how these different credit cards are doing as you spend more and more money. The x-axis is increased spending, the y-axis is increased points. Here you can see the different credit cards, the blue being the Sapphire Reserve. As you spend more and more money, it's gaining more and more ground over these other credit cards. Chase credit cards tend to favor people who are going to use Chase travel benefits. If this doesn't describe you or if there's another credit card company that you're interested in, let me know in the comments and I'll do a comparison for that one. The next user profile I want to look at is somebody who likes to churn credit cards. When you churn a credit card, you're opening up a card, you're taking advantage of the sign up bonuses, and then you're either going to cancel that card or you're going to downgrade it to a lesser free card from that same company. I recommend downgrading to a free version of that credit card company. Usually it's better for your credit score. If you're looking at churning a credit card, you're going to put a one in the first year only category. We'll assume that this person does not shop at Whole Foods, but they do enjoy shopping at Amazon. Let's see how this profile comes out in the spending comparison. The result for the churning champion is pretty obvious. Anybody could have guessed the Chafe Sapphire Reserve will come out on top. It had the most sign up bonuses over every other card. And then of course, second place is the Sapphire Preferred card. The Prime Visa comes in pretty close because we did add on Amazon Prime spending, but there's just no way it can keep up with these other two credit cards. So if you're into churning your credit cards, you're going to want to pick up the Chase Sapphire Reserved to take advantage of all of the sign up bonuses available. Most of the credit cards with a really big Big sign up bonuses do have some restrictions. They won't let you just continually churn the same credit card. Most of them will have a restriction saying if you've received this sign up bonus in the last two years, you will not be eligible for it. Now, if I was going to turn a credit card, I'll go ahead and show you the categories that I would look at. I don't utilize Lyft. I don't utilize DoorDash or Instacart. I don't really shop at Amazon. We usually take two trip and two travelers. We'll look at first year spending only. If I was going to pick a Chase credit card for churning, my churning credit card of choice would be first the Sapphire Reserve, even though I took out a lot of those bonus spending categories. And then second place would be the Sapphire Preferred. Next, if I was going to do my personal annual use card of choice, my categories would remain the same here, except I would put a zero in the first year only category. And then we can see how the point comparison is affected. I personally have about average spending on my credit card. So in the $19,000 category, the best card for me would be the Freedom Flex. Before I made this spreadsheet, I would have assumed that the Sapphire Reserve would come out on top because at first glance, it does have the most bonuses. But when we take a closer look after filling out my user profile, I'm not able to use most of these bonuses. The biggest bonuses are year one bonuses only. Make sure you're not full 
fooled by all the bonuses that credit cards like to advertise at sign up. As you can see, it is crucial to compare different credit cards at your spending levels. Different credit cards are going to have wildly different results depending on how much money you're spending and what you're spending that money on. If you download my spreadsheet, I would recommend entering in the values from your budget into these categories to see exactly which credit card comes out on top for you year after year. If you like my spreadsheet tool and would like to use it as well, I've included a link in the description for you to snag that for free. Please leave me some feedback in the comments if you like it, if you don't like it, if you see something that you want changed or added, let me know. Also, if you need help determining your spending levels, check out this video on the most passive budgeting strategy out there. Until next time.